Almost 85% of natural rubber in the world is produced by smallholder farmers. Smallholder farmers have a crucial role to play in the economies of rubber producing countries. Natural rubber supply chains are generally very traditional and are typically characterized by long chains that involve many actors. The long chains make the supply of natural rubber inefficient and reduce the margins that smallholder farmers receive for their rubber. Being at bottom of the supply chain, farmers receive lower prices for their rubber. The low rubber prices received by farmers make them less motivated to produce good quality rubber. Farmers are unaware of price differences between good and poor quality rubber and have little knowledge on the standards for good quality rubber. Based on the Indonesian national standard, the quality of natural rubber is determined by the amount of contaminants present, thickness of the rubber slabs or sheets, the use of coagulants, and the dry rubber content. Good quality rubber slabs or sheets are thin, have low levels of contaminants, have a high dry rubber content, and use organic acids such as forming acid for coagulation. It is important for farmers to learn how to process, store, and sell their rubber to ensure they get the best price for their rubber based on its quality. Farmers will need to determine and know the dry rubber content and the quality of rubber in its final form. To determine dry rubber content, the original weight of a sample of rubber is measured and recorded. The sample is then milled to remove water and contaminants. The milled sample undergoes drying and its weight measured and recorded. The dry rubber content is obtained by dividing the weight of the heated sample with its original weight and multiplying 100%. Obtain the daily price of per kilogram of natural rubber and multiply it with the dry rubber content value. This will provide the price of per kilogram of rubber for sale. After tapping, the latex will be collected in latex cups and coagulated. This process is called natural coagulation and is assisted by microorganisms. The time between tapping and coagulation varies between 8 to 48 hours. The coagulated latex is called cup lumps. Natural rubber can be presented in various forms. It can be in the form of cup lumps, slab lumps, thick slabs, or thin sheets. Cup lumps are latex that is coagulated in latex cups using a coagulant. Slab lumps are cup lumps arranged in a basket or bucket and compacted together by pouring in latex that has been mixed with coagulant. Thick slabs are formed by collecting latex from the field and mixing them together with coagulants in tub. Once formed and solidified, they are removed from the tubs. Thin sheets are formed when thick slabs are milled using rollers with or without patterned grooves. If the thin sheets are dry in a smokehouse, they will produce smoke sheets. The type of coagulant used determines the quality of rubber. Typically, farmers use sulfuric acid alum and fertilizers as a coagulation agent for latex. These are not recommended because they reduce the quality of rubber, pollute the environment, and pose safety issues to the farmer. Diorub is a highly recommended latex coagulant because it is organic, harmless, and can increase dry rubber content. The storage process also affects rubber quality. Storing rubber in ponds or soaking them in water will reduce its quality and dry rubber content. When collecting cup lumps, water must be drained and contaminants removed from the latex cups. It is recommended to store rubber in a dry place and not exposed to direct sunlight. For farmers who produce cup lumps, they should store it on shelves to drain water before selling them. The cup lumps should be grouped according to the time of collection from the field, with cup lumps collected earlier placed on the top and newly collected ones placed at the bottom. 
The longer rubber is stored, the higher the level of dry rubber content. During the coagulation process, rubber must be kept clean. Any foreign material that is mixed with rubber is called a contaminant. These contaminants are intentionally and unintentionally mixed with rubber. Contaminants are divided into three categories. Mild contaminants example includes leaves, tree barks, and insects. Heavy contaminants examples include rope threads, plastic pieces from sacks, soil, mud, and sand. Vulcanized rubber contaminants examples include used tires, flip-flops, and rubber foam. If contaminants get included into tires, the quality is affected and could lead to tire blowouts during use with fatal consequences. The thickness of rubber slabs and sheets affect the quality of rubber. The thinner the rubber sheets, the higher the quality because of the lower chances of having contaminants in them. The thinner the rubber sheets, the higher the price because contaminants are easily detected. The following table presents the quality of rubber based on thickness. Quality 1 sheet 3 mm, slab less than 50 mm, and kaplam less than 50 mm. Quality 2 sheet 5 mm, slab more than 50 to 100 mm, and kaplam more than 50 to 100 mm. The following table presents the quality of rubber based on thickness. The price received by farmer during the sale of rubber would depend on the quality of rubber produced. Therefore, farmers need to adopt good practices from tapping to processing and storing of rubber to ensure they obtain best prices.